Let's now take a look at basic data summaries. So you already know that there is a function called summary to get basic data summaries. So here what I'm doing is I've got this file called autompg.csv and I am reading the data from that file into a data frame whose variable name I am giving as auto and of course this you know is the assignment operator right here. Okay, so now notice that when I read this, normally you just say read uh, read.csv and you give the name of the file. Here I am doing a little bit more, I am saying header equals true which is a default, I don't really need to say this. Uh, what that says is the first row of the file contains the column names. This part is important, strings as factors equals false. Now by default, read.csv considers all columns with string variables as factors. Okay, that's the default. Now I'm saying don't do that. Read strings just as character strings. Okay, that is because this particular data file has a column for uh, the car name okay and each car name occurs I think only once so there's really no point in treating it as a factor I just want to treat it as a character variable okay now in this particular example it's not important we are not going to be using that particular column for anything uh, but I just want to take this opportunity to show you that you can uh, suppress strings from being treated as factors by default okay so now I'm just looking at some basic information about the data set. You already know that you can use the function n row to find the number of rows. You can also use the function n call to find the number of columns. And it so happens that this particular data set has 398 rows and nine columns. You can also see the number of rows and the number of columns together by using a single function called dim. Okay, dim stands for dimensions and uh, you can use that function. It will give you the number of rows and the number of columns. Obviously, the result is a vector with two elements. The first element is the number of rows. The second element is the number of columns. Okay, of course, because the result is a vector, I can get the number of rows by doing dim auto within square brackets one because after all it's a vector with two elements the first element is the number of rows so I can do this to get the number of rows but of course you know why would I do that when I can use the n row function I'm just again demonstrating some things for you here again you can get the number of columns by doing dim auto within square brackets two that will give you the number of columns So we can do other things. So for example, before we get any data summaries, what I would like to do is to convert the number of cylinders, right? There is a column in this, in this data file called cylinders and it's got numeric values. So R is going to be treating it by default as numeric. And uh, what I'd like to do is to ask R to treat it as a factor. So we can do factor auto dollar cylinders and the levels that is the cylinder values that are in the file are three four five six and eight and i want it instead to be uh, associated with more user-friendly labels three cylinder four cylinder etc etc so now we can do uh, use the summary function to get summary of the information in the data frame. So when you do summary of a data frame, you're going to get a summary of every column in the data frame. And I'm showing just two particular columns, for example. So I've chosen a numeric column. MPG is a numeric column that tells you how many miles per gallon each of the uh, the automobiles give and cylinders is a column that tells you how many cylinders there are and we just converted cylinders into a factor. Now prior to our conversion cylinders was a numeric variable because the values in the file are all numeric values and read.csv by default reads numeric values as numeric variable. Okay, So you see that the summary that you get for a numeric variable like mpg 
is quite different from the summary you get for a factor variable like cylinders. For a numeric variable, you get uh, a six value summary, right? So you get the minimum, you get the maximum, and then you get the first quartile, median, and the mean, and the third quartile. Okay, so that's what you get for a numeric variable. Whereas for a factor variable, and also for character strings, what you get is the count for each of the different distinct values. Okay, so that means essentially in our data set, there are four cars which have three cylinders, 204 cars have four cylinders and so on. Okay, so the kind of summary that you get depends upon the type of variable or the type of column that is being summarized. So just by looking at the summary, you'll be able to see what kind of variable a particular column is. Of course, you have already seen how you can use the str function also to make some inferences about what kind of columns there are. So that's what we are seeing here. If you look at the str function, you can see here, uh, for example, you've got, there's a column called number, which has got, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, etc. NPG is numeric, cylinders is factor, and you can see that the factor levels are exactly what we said. Okay, uh, and so on. Okay, car name should actually not be a factor, right? Because when we read it, we said, don't treat the string as a factor, right? So actually speaking, if you did this, you would not see car name shown as a factor. Instead, you would be seeing it. Okay, so now when you have data, there are several useful functions that you can apply to data. And here we are looking at some vector functions that we can use. So for example, auto dollar MPG is going to be a vector containing all the MPG values in the auto data frame, right? So auto itself is a data frame. It has many columns and each column is a vector and you can get at each column by using the dollar operator. So I do dollar uh, auto dollar MPG and I'm going to get all the MPG values as a vector. I can then apply the min function to that vector. And of course, I will get the minimum value. Turns out it's nine. Similarly, max, range, right? So range is going to tell you the minimum and the maximum value for the vector. The vector in this case, again, is auto dollar MPG. So we see that the minimum value is nine, of course, as we expected. And the maximum value is 46.6, .6, again, as we expected. Okay, uh, so that's what we are seeing here. And of course you can do mean find, to find the average, you can do SD to get the standard deviation, and you can do var to get the variance.